In this video, I'm going to show you how to create the part model in SOLIDWORKS for IME-143, IME-144, and IME-145's first lathe project. As you see in this engineering drawing here, we're going to model the part using four different steps or features. The first feature, we're going to create a revolved protrusion to create the main body of the part. The second feature, we're going to use the hole wizard to create the threaded hole, the 3816 threaded hole on the back. Then we'll use the same hole wizard to create the 51618 threaded hole on the front of the part. Then we'll use the thread tool to create the external thread, the half 13, on the front nose of the part. So our first step is to kind of analyze the drawing and understand what dimensions we're going to have to place for the revolved protrusion. So I look at the diameters, I look at the 925, I look at the 625, I look at the 400 thou thread relief diameter, and then the 0.493 diameter that we'll have to go ahead and turn before we cut the thread in with a die. So, moving back to SOLIDWORKS, our first step will be File New. We're going to select Part and select OK. Now, the feature we're going to create is called the Revolve. Revolve allows you to draw half the profile of the part and then it revolves at a certain amount of degrees or a full 360 degrees around uh, an axis of revolution or an axis of rotation. So when I look at our engineering drawing, you'll see we could either revolve around the front plane or the top plane and draw the profile. The right plane would, get, would be the wrong plane to revolve because it wouldn't orient the part like you see in the engineering drawing right here. So when I move back to SOLIDWORKS, I'm going to go ahead and revolve on the front plane. At this point, I'm going to use my line tool to go ahead and sketch out a profile of the part. So remember, we're drawing half of the part. So you'll see this resembles a pretty close resemblance to half the part. We're going to use our smart dimension to pretty much size everything. So if I go back and look at my, my part, I'm going to go ahead and do the lengths real quick. Then I'll do the different diameters. So notice we have 4, 0.875, 2, and then 0.09, and 30 degrees. So let's go back and apply that using smart dimension. So if I smart dimension from this line to this line and drag up, I can go ahead and make that 4.0. At this point, I know that this line right here, if I click on it and drag up, is 2 inches. I don't know how long this line is at the moment. I can do a little math, but that's not needed. Because, quite frankly, we can dimension from here to here, drag up, and key in 0.875. Now, the last linear distance we have to cover is the thread relief's length. If I click on this line and drag upwards and over, it's 0 0.09. Now remember, this angle from this line to this line is specified at 30 degrees for the thread. So when I go ahead and I click on this line and that line and drag up, it provides me an angle measurement. I don't want 45 degrees. I want to go ahead and key in 30.0. Now I have fully dimensioned the lengths on my part. I need to go ahead and set up the diametrical dimensions now. Now because this is only half the part, if I dimension from this, from this line to that line, I would have to divide everything by 2. However, if I draw a center line in my revolve protrusion feature, I'm going to draw it outwards this way, and press escape, I can use the center line to create di diameter dimensions. So if I click on smart dimension, I click this top line and the center line, it gives me a radial dimension of from above the center line. If I go below, it gives me a di diametrical dimension or a diameter. So if I click my mouse button there, I know that that diameter is 0.925. Next, we come back over to this dimension right here. If I click on that line and the center line, drop down, 
I know that that diameter is 0.625. Moving back, let's look at the drawing real quick. You'll see that the thread relief's diameter is 400 thou, and then the, the diameter that we're going to cut the thread into ends up being 0.493 for the half 13 thread. So when I move back to SolidWorks, I click this line and the center line, drag out, get a diameter dimension, and I type in 0.4. At this point, the last dimension we need goes from the, there to there, and we end up getting a 0.493 diameter for that one. Now before we're all done and we, we exit this feature, I'm going to go ahead and create the chamfers in the sketch. So to do that, I look back at my engineering drawing and I see that I have two by 50 thou by 45 degree chamfers. One on the front of the part and one on the rear of the part. Remember, every thread starts with a chamfer. It helps the thread get started when you're going to thread the internal and the external thread together. So when I go back to SolidWorks, I go ahead and I select chamfer. It's right underneath sketch fillet. You can create a 2D chamfer as well. You don't have to create it in the 3D model. So when I select sketch chamfer there, I key in the size over here in the tree, the design tree. So 0.05 and then 0.05. At this point, I have my geometry ready to revolve a full 360 so I can make my round part. So I'm going to go ahead and hit exit sketch. It brings me into the 3D component. Let's say we didn't want to go a full 360 degrees. I could do 180 degrees and have half of a round part when I hit the check mark. However, looking at the engineering drawing, it gets revolved a full 360 degrees. So back to SolidWorks, I'm going to type in 360 and check mark. We have now created the lathe part minus all of the threads in one feature. Remember, the best way to model things is in the least amount of features. So now, looking at the part, we have to create the internal threads on both the back and the front of the part. If we go back to the engineering drawing, you'll notice the thread callout for the 3816 thread has a depth callout of 0.75. However, we need to be able to drill a little bit deeper before we tap threads into our part at 0.75 deep. Therefore, if you look in the notes, the engineer specified that they want a one inch hole for the 3816 tap. So we're gonna go ahead and build this in the hole wizard. We're gonna have a one inch hole and then three quarter inches of thread. So moving back to the SolidWorks drawing, you'll see once we create either an extrude or evolve, we can go ahead and create all different other types of features in order to modify our part. So we're going to learn how the hole wizard works. When I click on the hole wizard, it comes up with a bunch of different options for different types of holes. In our case today, we want to go ahead and create a straight tapped hole, or that's their name, SolidWorks' is named for a threaded hole. So, so when I click on straight tap, I go ahead and come down here to the size specifications. And you'll see because we have ANSI inch, we have all the different standard inch sizes of threads. So what I can do is I can pick 3816 right there. And if I wanted the thread to go all the way through my part, I could do through all. However, if you remember, the thread actually only gets 0.75 inches of thread and one inch of actually hole. So I'm going to go ahead and select blind because it doesn't go all the way through the part. Now, looking at the options here, you'll see what we have the thread is at 0.75 and then the hole, instead of 0.94, we're going to go 1.0 inches deep. At this point, you're going to see that there, there are options here. You can have your thread class shown. You can do a, a chamfer on it or a near side countersink, which is a chamfer. However, we're going to make sure that with thread callout is just clicked on there. Now, in order to place the hole that you specified here with the hole wizard, 
you select the Positions tab. Once you select the Positions tab, you have to go ahead and select a plane you want to create the thread on. So I want to create it on the back of the part right here. Now notice, I could actually create the hole right through the center there in the origin, but in order to go ahead and see the view a little bit easier, I'm going to click on Spacebar and the Normal 2 option so it becomes 90 degrees to my view, that plane that I selected. Now, with the lathe, a traditional lathe, it'd be very hard to make the hole off center like you see right here. So we're going to make sure we place the hole right in the center of the part. And then we hit our check mark. At this point, it shows you a hidden line for the major diameter of the thread is going to be, and then a hole where the minor diameter is. You don't actually get to see threads using the hole wizard option. Up in the options up here in SolidWorks, you could go ahead and select cosmetic thread, but really it's just kind of showing you shading that looks like a thread. So we'll keep it the same right now. Now, if I was to go ahead and show my view with hidden lines, you're going to see we have a thread selected, or we have a threaded hole in there, or a hole in the part. The reason it has a point because holes are commonly created with a drill bit, and a drill bit has a conical point at the end. So moving my view back to shaded and outlined, I'm going to go ahead and do the use the hole wizard again in order to create the internal thread in the front face of the part. So when I select hole wizard, I'm now going to go back to the engineering drawing, show you that we have to create a 5 16 18 UNC 2B thread that's 0.75 deep. Now, for the 5 16 18 tap, the engineer has specified they want to drill 1.25 inches down. So we're going to make the hole 1.25 inches deep and then 0.75 inches of thread inside that hole. So we move back to SolidWorks and we're going to go ahead and select Hole Wizard. We're going to pick Straight Tap Hole. I'm going to move down. Because it's an ANSI or a US standard thread, we're going to go ahead and select a 5 16 18 thread. Now, we know that it's not through all, so we're going to select blind. And we're going to go ahead and make the hole 1.25 inches deep and the thread 0.75 deep. At this point, we're ready to go ahead and click on the positions tab and select the plane we want to go ahead and create the hole on, which is the front plane of the part. Now when I hit spacebar and normal too, it brings a view normal to my vision, and I am able to place the thread right in the middle of the part, the threaded hole, and hit check mark. At this point, I've created both external threads on my part. All that I've got left is to go ahead and thread the outside of the part. So when I go back to the SOLIDWORKS engineering drawing, you'll see I have a half dash 13 UNC 2A thread that extends the entire protrusion all the way up through the thread relief. So we're going to go ahead and create that thread. So back to SOLIDWORKS. Underneath the hole wizard flyout menu, you'll see there's a thread option. Thread option, when I select OK here, allows me to go ahead and thread my part. Now, Notice we have inch threads, so we're going to pick inch die, because a die is how you actually create an external thread, one method of it. And I'm able to pick the different sizes of threads. Because I have a half 13, SOLIDWORKS actually shows it in the decimal equivalent, 0.5-13. Now, when I go ahead and I start picking the thread location, I'm going to pick this line on the part. What that does is it shows me a, a purple rendition of where the thread's going to go based off the input values up here. Now, I want to go ahead and make sure the thread extends past my part into my thread relief. So if I remember correctly, it's actually 0.875 would bring me right to the edge of the part, but it's including the chamfer. So really, we're going to go 0.80. Now, we want to go ahead and we want to offset that thread 
a little bit forward so it goes, it starts in front of the chamfer. And we'll go ahead and offset that by 0 0.075, 75 thou. What that ends up doing is it starts the thread off the part and it ends it in the thread relief, just like we'll kind of do with the die. So when I hit check mark, notice the thread didn't fully extend past my part right here. So I'm gonna go back and actually fix that. In order to go back and modify features, over in the design tree, you right click on them, we're gonna hit edit feature. We're gonna end up going off the part 0.1 of an inch. And then we'll end up going 0.8 25. Just as long as the thread stops somewhere in the thread relief and it starts at a little bit forward of where your part starts, you should be all good. So when I hit the check mark, you'll see now I've got my part fully threaded with an external thread using the thread tool. When I hit spacebar and isometric, you'll see our pictorial view looks a lot like the pictorial view in the engineering drawing. So the last step is to go File, Save As, and save the engineering drawing somewhere where you can easily access it, or save the, the part where you can easily access it, in the same place that you'll end up saving your engineering drawing. So I'm going to save mine in Lathe Project 1. Let me go find that. Lathe Project 1. I'm going to call this... Camtasia Video Demo, LP number one. Go ahead and save it as your last name or any file name that'll go ahead and allow you to distinguish what part file you have. Once I press save, I am now done creating the solid model for the first lathe project. Join me in the next video where I show you how to create the engineering drawing. Have a great day.